Thanks for joining me again as we look back at another great classic film. This is a film that simultaneously saved the film musical genre and a struggling movie studio. It furthered the career of someone who would transform choreography and launched careers of a number of actors who would go on to become stars in their own right. It is 42nd Street from 1933. Adapted from the 1932 novel of the same name by Bradford Ropes, the screenplay was adapted by Ryan James and James Seymour with uncredited contributions by Whitney Bolton. It follows the cast and crew as they rehearse for a Broadway show at the height of the Great Depression. Ropes envisioned the novel as a muckraking expose of the exploitation of chorus girls on Broadway, describing it as the Uncle Tom's cabin of the chorus girl. Busby Berkeley, who had begun developing some of his trademark techniques, like the parade of stars in the overhead shot at Goldwyn Studios and Universal, made the move to Warner Brothers on the promise of greater independence, a critical element of this film's success. Musicals had been losing money for a number of years, with Warner Brothers being one of the few studios willing to take a chance on them. The budget of around $400,000 was a big risk for Warners, who were already in financial trouble at the time. While the cast went through numerous changes, the final lineup is impressive. Warren William and Richard Bartholomus were considered for the role of Julian Marsh before it went to Warner Baxter. Kay Francis and Ruth Chatterton were passed over for Babe Daniels, an established star who'd made the transition from silent films to talkies on the strength of her beautiful singing voice. Loretta Young made way for Ruby Keeler, who was making her screen debut. Ginger Rogers, who was dating the film's original director, Mervyn Leroy, was preferred over Joan Blondell. And Una Merkel was cast instead of Glenda Farrell, with Dick Powell and George Brent remaining in the roles they were first cast in. Illness and the fact that filming for I'm a Fugitive for a chain gang ran over schedule meant that the original director Mervyn Leroy was replaced by Lloyd Bacon before shooting began in October of 1932. It ran for 28 days across Warner Brothers' original Sunset Studio, the Vitagraph Studio in Hollywood and the old first national soundstage in Burbank. It includes the first on-screen romantic pairing of Dick Powell and Ruby Keeler, something the public embraced, and this led to Warner's uh, casting them together in six more films. In preparation for the film's premiere, a train called the 42nd Street Special travelled from Hollywood to New York City for the film's opening at the Strand Theatre on the 3rd of uh, August 1933. It carried Joey Brown, Tom Mix and his horse, Betty Davis, Laura LaPlante, Glenn Farrell, Lyle Tal Talbot, uh, Leo Carrillo, uh, Claire Dodd, Preston Foster and Eleanor Holm, all of whom appeared on stage after the screening. Reviews were positive with Mordaunt Hall of the New York Times calling it the liveliest and one of the most tuneful screen musical comedies that has come out of Hollywood. The New York World Telegram described the film as sprightly entertainment combining a plausible story of backstage life, some excellent musical numbers and dance routines and a cast of players that are considerably above the average for screen musicals. Variety wrote, every element is professional and convincing. And John Mosh of the New Yorker called it a bright movie with as pretty a little fantasy of Broadway as you may hope to see. The success of this film, as well as uh, musicals Gold Diggers of 1933 and Footlight Parade, effectively saved Warner Brothers from bankruptcy and set them up uh, as a rival um, to the more expensive MGM musicals which followed. Ginger Rogers went on to even greater success uh, later that year when she uh, partnered with Fred Astaire in Flying Down to Rio. It was the fourth and most popular movie at the 1933 US box office, earning uh, almost $1.5 million and receiving Academy Award nominations for Best Picture and Best Sound, and was named one of the 10 best films of 1933 by Film Daily. In 1988, 42nd Street was selected for preservation in the US National Film Registry. It is one of the 400 greatest American movies, the 13th greatest musical of all time, and is one of the 1001 movies you must see before you die. The original Broadway production based on this film opened at the Winter Garden Theatre in uh, August of 1980, ran for 3,486 performances, won the 1981 Tony Award for the Best Musical and since has been produced regionally and professionally around the world, becoming one of the longest running shows on Broadway. Lots of great reasons to watch this film. The musical and dance numbers are fantastic, the Busby Berkeley design choreography is mesmerising and the performances of stars in the making are great to watch. So, what I'd suggest you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, click on it and watch it, and as always, we'd invite you to come back, let others know your thoughts about the film, and whether you recommend it for them as well. And then we're back in the not-too-distant future for our next classic films review. Catch you next time.